Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Australia is not what it seems to be. I came across this gem in the vast desert of the southern part of Western Australia. It was discovered by amateur researchers, like most discoveries of any significance in the last decades. It's a star fort where there isn't supposed to be one, if we believe the official history of Australia. There are no historical records of star forts being built, much less in the middle of nowhere. Star forts are commonly built as the center of cities. If you zoom out a little, you can see the same things as in so many other star fort locations around the world. Signs of what looks like a large ancient city that has been bombed. Zoom out a little more, and you see numerous squares stretching hundreds of miles. These are not natural formations, they look like a grid. Many streets or straight lines lead to the star fort, as if it had been some kind of center from which to disperse or accumulate energy. According to Google Earth, there are roads that lead to the place, even though it's not marked as inhabited, as tourist site, or anything else. Nor is it clear whether the roads are paved and there are no towns nearby. The closest towns are called Xanthus and Baladonia, a two-hour drive north or south of the Star Fort. The connecting road between the two villages does not pass through the ancient region, it goes around it. As in other places, modern roads were likely built on top of the ancient straight lines. The highway through Baladonia, for example, is perfectly straight for 90 miles. In the internet, the settlement of Baladonia is claimed to have been abandoned. From what I can tell online, Xanthus is nothing more than a train station and an airstrip. I'm not familiar with the area, so I can't tell how accessible the ancient site is. But I'll say this much. There are many desert areas, where a little bit of digging will unearth destroyed ancient civilizations. Signs of such can be found in Sahara, Arizona, California, the Empty Quarter in Saudi Arabia, the Gobi Desert, and elsewhere. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Australia has the longest fence in the world. They built a staggering 56-14 kilometers of fence in the 1880s and called it the Dingo Fence. Its purpose is, allegedly, to keep rabbits off of cropland. Nothing unusual, right? Let's build a fence through the entire country to keep rabbits away from our crops. But since crops are grown on both sides of the fence, you wonder which side is to be protected. Many people in Australia have commented that keeping rabbits out cannot be the real purpose of the fence, because before the structure was even completed, there were plenty of rabbits on both sides of it. It's the explanation given to people too lazy to think for themselves. In those days, there were reports that the fence was useless against rabbits, but they kept building it. And even though today the rabbit pest no longer exists, they keep maintaining it. That's the giveaway that it was never about rabbits. But for is it then? The second longest fence in the world is also in Australia. It's the rabbit-proof fence of Western Australia stretching to 3265 kilometers. There are actually three gigantic fences in Western Australia alone. Certainly an odd way of going about pest control. In other countries, protection against intruders is handled by the private fences of its citizens. Nobody else in the whole wide world makes fences against animals across the entire country, especially not one as big as Australia. Parts of these fences are electric. Here too, the pests they are supposed to protect against exist in abundance on both sides of the fence. They reportedly cost 10 million a year. It's conceivable that Australians wish to separate fertile from infertile land and keep out the strange and venomous desert creatures from their farms. On the other hand, the fences have been shown to cause ecological damage. 
In other parts of the world, we see how desert creatures tend to stay in deserts. It's the climate they need. Could there be some other reason for the fences that we haven't been told? At first sight, Australia is a country like any other. But just a little look beyond superficial tourist brochures, reveals that it's entirely unique. There are a lot of places that are off limits to normal people, because they can't be accessed with normal vehicles, or because the government forbids you to go there. The Wimmera Prohibited Area. This area the size of England, is prohibited to you. You will never see it, unless you work for the government. Never mind that Aborigines lived there for thousands of years, and still do. They say this area is for aerospace research, air force and rocket ranges. The problem? The area is vast. Imagine needing to use all of England for rocket experiments. Who needs that much space for rocket launches? The English don't, the Americans don't, the Russians don't. America has 329 million people. In Russia there are 145 million. Australia has only 25 million people, but needs a rocket test site of this size. Just like with the rabbit fences, the official explanation is not plausible. The rocket range does not require even a tiny fraction of that space. Could there be another reason such a large chunk of land is kept secret? Between 1956 and 1963, a part of the area was rented out to Great Britain for nuclear testing. But the contaminated area is much smaller than the entirety of the Wimmera prohibited area. There is one highway you are allowed to drive on. Stewart Highway, the 1700 km highway that crosses Australia from south to north. But while driving through hundreds of miles of the Forbidden Zone, you mustn't deviate from that highway at any time, for any reason. One reason for the secrecy could be that the area, when seen on Google Earth, is full of ancient lines and grids that were put there artificially and never explained in your schools, media, or by your government. As in many other areas in the world, modern installations were built on top of the old ones, perhaps in an effort to conceal or repurpose them. There's still a lot more to cover on this topic. So, to keep it short, I've split this video into two parts. For part two, you can click the link in the description box below.